Thank you. When I wanted to be a speaker at this event, I knew I had to talk about cancel culture. Partially, it was because I think it's dangerous and ruining our society. But if I'm being really honest, it was because a lot of my friends like to say a lot of really crazy things. And I need to take this time to prove to you that you shouldn't cancel them anytime soon. Now, the team was interested in what I had to say, so they invited me to an interview. But to my surprise, they only had one question to ask. They wanted to know how I was going to make sure my topic would be neutral and apolitical. And that's when I first realized how much cancel culture has already permeated our society. Because even a local TEDx talk in a high school in the middle of the prairies was worried about getting attacked and vilified on Twitter. That should tell you a lot about how afraid we are. But luckily, the tech team was brave enough to give this topic a chance. But that's also the center of the problem. We shouldn't have to take a chance on giving someone a platform. We should never be considering the pros and cons for freedom of speech and expression. And that's what I want to talk about. Why vilifying our opponents goes against everything we ought to stand for as a society. But first, I want to start with a clarification. There's a big difference between holding someone accountable and canceling them. Accountability on its own is a good thing because it's about justice. It's about doing what's right. It's just for me, for example, to say, hey, you can't keep doing that. That's not OK. But accountability is also about reconciliation. When we hold someone accountable, we ask them to apologize. And we forgive them so we can all move on stronger and more together. But today, we stopped doing that. And I think the reason why is simple. Our definition of accountability has gone way too far. And here's what I mean. Today, we've stopped being forgiving. We've stopped trying to reconcile our differences. We just want retribution. We want to punish you the same way you punished us. We want to hurt you the same way you hurt us. I can't tell you exactly why we've turned out to be this vengeful and hateful. It could be because of the radical polarization in politics, politics that LP talked about. It could be because we've lost trust and patience with our world. It could be because any buffoon like that guy can go on the internet and say whatever they want with no consequences at all. But here's my take. I don't think everyone is like that guy. I think people who participate in cancel culture do it out of a desire to do good. They do it because they think we need to fight things like racism and discrimination. But they're not sure how. They're not sure when someone is being genuinely racist or when someone just made a poorly timed joke. And in this confusion, we're treating everything the same. And so we're using the tactics that we normally reserve for the most extreme cases against ordinary civilians. And in our quest to achieve good liberal ideals, we've resorted to illiberal means like vilification and like cancel culture. And today, this is leading to something very frightening. We're now in the age of demonization. When we meet someone we disagree with, we don't just think, I can debate with you or I can find a compromise with you. No, we think you're a bad person for having that opinion. How could you possibly think such a thing? That's the wrong opinion. And we don't just do that. We boil your whole life down to the fact that you have that one opinion that we disagree with. We attack you relentlessly for it in a way that amounts to nothing less than cyberbullying. Consider what we did to Kevin Hart as an example. For those of you who don't know him, Kevin Hart's a famous American comedian. His humor is pretty crazy. It's like the stuff my friends say. But Kevin Hart wasn't canceled because of that. He was canceled because of a homophobic tweet from years before. I'm not saying we shouldn't have called Kevin Hart out. What he did was unacceptable. But in our rage, we went too far. We called him moronic, idiotic, and detestful. We called his entire family despicable. We went so far as to say anyone who still liked Kevin Hart must also be a bad person. But Kevin Hart can count himself lucky because he made it out fine. 
But most of us, on Kevin Hart, we don't have millions of dollars to fall back on. We don't have social media teams to navigate controversies. And so when we get canceled, it could mean losing our job. It could mean losing our friends. It could mean being knocked into a different path in life all because of one comment. Now, I know there are still going to be people who are skeptical. The most common counter argument is that there are just some people out there who we can't talk to because they're so opposed to equality. And I'll be honest, when I first started researching this topic, I also agreed with that line. There are probably some people who are just so opposed to equality that we shouldn't talk to them. We should just ignore them. But then I thought about it a bit more, and I realized this doesn't make any sense. The reason accountability works so well is because you come to realize the errors of your ways on your own. When I call you out, I tell you about the people you're victimizing. I tell you about the people who are suffering because of what you did. And so you'll sympathize with them and you'll apologize on your own. That's how we achieve progress. But cancel culture does the exact opposite because we make you feel like the victim. We attack you in such a relentless and brutal way that you don't think you've done anything wrong. You feel marginalized, you feel isolated, and you have no incentive to apologize. Rather, you'll just entrench yourselves in your own position. So when I hear people say, we need to achieve progress through cancel culture, I liken it to this. You're trying to fight a fire with a bucket of kerosene. It doesn't work very well. And the worst part about all of this is that it's leading to real physical violence. Cancel culture is one of the reasons as to why hate speech is on the rise around the world. It's one of the reasons as to why anti-Semitism is on the rise around the world. It's one of the reasons as to why communities are being graffitied and places of worship are being burnt. So when I see people insulting each other online under the guise of activism and progress, I have one thing to say. That's not activism, and that will never be progress. Now, I wish I could have ended this talk by telling you about my miraculous solution to solve all our problems. But I can't, because there is no miraculous solution. But there are still things we can do as individuals to help stop this problem. I want to leave you with two things. The first thing is to not buy in to mob mentality. Cancel culture spreads because people see what's trending online and they decide to get in on the action. They want to feel like they're also doing something. But if we take the time to do our own research, if we take the time to check if this person really deserves to be canceled or just deserves a call out, we can stop hate right in its tracks. But the second thing is a lot simpler. We just have to be nicer. We have to be kinder. We have to get rid of hate and embrace hope. And then maybe one day, maybe one day, not too far from now, we can get rid of the cancer of cancel culture. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming out. <laughs>